Got a fairly standard Blues Junior here with fairly standard problems. When it came in, the mains fuse was blown. I changed that out and I powered it on on my current limiter and you got to see this. Whoa, did you see that? I'll do it one more time. So as you can tell, or as you might suspect, this particular EL84, the left one was bad. So that pair of groove tubes went away. It's got a new pair of JJ's in there. And at that point, there was a low output level and a very fizzy sound. And you can hear a little bit of that right here. And that is the classic sound of an class AB amp where one of the outputs, whether it's the push or the pull, is not working. So you're only getting half the waveform. So you have distortion, severe crossover distortion. It sounds nasty, and you're only getting about half or you know, perceived less than half the standard output level. It can be worse than that. It also throws the bias off on the tube, which is con conducting. It's, it's not a good place to be. So I went through and I measured the standard things in, in this amp. I measured all the diodes because they use one in thousand uh, uh, one N 4006s in bl the Blues Juniors, those can fail. The filter caps all look okay. I measured all the dropping resistors. I didn't expect those to be the problem causing this, but it's always good to check. Uh, I then measured the two grid stoppers here and here. Those are 1.5K. I measured the diodes from the plate to ground on each output tube, but those are fine. Then I measured the two screen grid resistors, which are half watt, 100 ohms in the Blues Junior. And this one measures 100 ohms, and this one measures about 4 meg. So this resistor is pretty much completely failed open, which is not a surprise um, with a half watt, 100 ohm screen grid resistor. That's a, just asking for a failure. So I'm going to pull the board out, and both screen grids are going to get replaced with 2 watt 1Ks. 100 ohm to 1K, 1 kilo ohm, 1,000. So a 10 times in increase in the value. And I'm going to double the wattage and get the new resistors mounted a little bit off the, off the board for better airflow. Now, I don't know whether the old tube failed and took out the screen grid or whether the screen grid blew and took out the old tube, uh, though honestly I think it's probably the first because if the screen grid blew, it would make life harder for this tube, this tube, not this tube. So imagine it was this, the tube died because of the too hot bias in these things and that took out its screen grid resistor. I've already cooled off the bias and I've already done my little standard mod to decrease the reverb depth because this thing was insane. The reverb on two was just over the top. And both those things were done with the owner's permission. And I explained to him the pros and cons. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's two resistors. It's easily reversible. No big deal. It just makes the amp better. But the next thing to do to make the amp better will be give it the full output level and clean headroom that it's supposed to have. So let me pull the board and change these nasties out. And before I pull the board, I will go ahead. Well, let me, let me show you one thing first. My meter. This is just a little Descendi 18B plus, which is about 20, 25 bucks online because my old fluke died and I needed something really fast and I didn't have two, three hundred dollars sitting around to replace the fluke with one, a new one. And uh, this thing has worked really well for me. Actually, this is my second one. The first one lasted about a year, a year and a half. It eventually did die, but for 20, 30 bucks, I just ordered another one and I'm going to get two more of these to have around uh, so I can have a whole bunch of meters for metering more than one thing at a time and I'll eventually spend the money to get some fluke that does everything but 
seriously, for everything under 700 volts DC, including capacitance and diodes and stuff, this this little 18B plus is great. It's much better than anything I started out with. And it's, it's good enough for me to use every day at a professional level. So uh, for those who ask for it, let's make sure there's no DC in here. I've already done this, but I'll do it on camera. 2.987 volts DC. Same here. Same here. Now, this amp does not have standby. And an amp that has standby, you can have it powered off with a standby switch set to standby and measure zero volts on the mains filter cap, but have 300 volts on a preamp node because the standby uh, switch is in standby, which disconnects these caps from these caps. So to drain an amp, make sure it's not in standby, that it's in the play of condition. This amp is safe. I could get in here. I could I could lick it if I wanted to. That that would be gross and weird, but um, no worries. So now I'm going to snip these two nasty little underrated screen grid resistors, and I'm going to pull the leads up straight, perpendicular to the board, so that I can push them down through on the other side and uh, not damage any solder pads. You can also cut them flush right here at the top of the board and just get the, the rest off the back. But I find it easier to leave with the extra length here and uh, gives it a nice thing to push. I can reach around and just push my thumb while I'm soldering the other side and it comes right out. Your mileage may vary, but that's, that's what works best for me. But first I've got to get in here and undo all these silly zip ties and a lot of the quick connects so I can access the board. So we'll be right back. Okay, I cheated. Sorry about that. I cheated and added a little bit of fresh solder here, 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 and here. So the old factory solder will flow because adding that little bit of extra solder to it added flux. So now I can heat that up and push that lead up from the other side. And do the same thing with the resistor bodies. But the ends of these resistors have these little bent over bits. If I were to tug that through first, let me just rip up these little pads on the side of the board. Now, the leads that are not attached to the resistor, I can just pull up like this and they go away. The other side, since I snipped off the little hook, I can now pull that resistor through. And I want to make sure I don't let it fall off into the chassis and forget about it and have a little bit of metal wandering around. So I've got it with some pliers from the other side, just a little lightweight needle nose. I dropped it, but I dropped it on the floor, not inside the chassis, so that's fine. And that one just pulled right out. So now, let's get that old solder off those four pads. This is easy peasy. He's really hot iron. Really good right size tip, good braid, comes right up. All the other resistors on the board have the stripe down, so this will have the stripe, the tolerance bound band down as well for consistency. It makes no difference electronically, but you know, uh, visual consistency is nice and it shows it an attention to detail. And if you're, what's the best way to explain this? If you're in a mindset where everything has to be matched and you're checking everything, you're more likely to be checking everything as you go and do a thorough job rather than doing it on autopilot. If you're just slapping stuff in and you're not paying attention to that, what other things are you not paying attention to? Maybe that's just me, but it's it's a it's a focus thing. It's a my wife who does yoga would say it's a mindfulness thing. It's just kind of a way to be sure that you're in the right mindset. Sweat all the details, even the ones that aren't that important, other than just, you know, cosmetics. And the, the big stuff tends to follow suit. Notice I didn't bend the leads over. There's no real need. This is a really low mass part. There's not gonna be any stress on that. All right, we got new one watt 
sorry, two watt 1K screen good resistors. And put this board back in place and we'll see what the amp sounds like. Oh, one other thing to show while I'm up here and I got the tripod in the area, so to speak. While I have these things apart, I like to get the dust off. So a quick swipe to get most of the dust. And yeah, you can see it's kind of yucky. Then I'll get in there with just a tiny bit of WD-40. Don't want to leave a greasy film. I'll apply it to the paper towel rather than directly to the metal. And then I'll get those stubborn little bits up without uh, affecting the silk screen numbers and labels. You know, aside from looking nice, which is always a nice thing, when the owner gets the amp back and it looks better than it did when it came in, it makes people more amenable to my bill. You, know, you get a sense that you're getting something. You didn't just uh, give this guy some money and the amp magically works and you're not quite sure why. It looks like it ought to work better now, doesn't it? I think that's pretty important. Well, uh, I've tested it and everything's working fine. You can see the new ones. Where's a little pointer? You can see the new 1Ks here. And everything is well. Let me move it over to its uh, usual playing spot and let you hear it real fast. Mm -hmm. 